Hello, everyone. Hi, David. Hi, Chin. How are you? Thanks. Hello, everyone. David, what has triggered university to build a brand new museum? Can you give us some background about the Chow Chap Ling Museum? Sure. And as you rightly say, museums and collections intersect in a natural um, parts of a great university. In fact, when I was um, building the business case for bringing our collections together, I went through the top tier universities of the world and without doubt, all had major university museums and all had invested significantly in those museums in the past 15 or so years. So we really uh, needed to join that cohort. We had the collections. The first museum established in um, Australia was at the University of Sydney in 1860 by Sir Charles Nicholson. And that was a collection of Mediterranean world antiquities because Sir Charles Nicholson as the first um, uh, provost of the university saw the value of these types of collections in giving students a broad education. Those collections were quickly followed by the Maclay family donation of their family collections that were based on the, entom on the entomology collections of Sir Alexander Maclay and later added to by other family members. These collections, Sir Alexander's collections were founded in the late um, um, 18th century. You know, already formed collections were arriving at the university by the, by the uh, mid and um, late 19th century. However, um, and at the same time, Sir Charles Nicholson established the art collection um, with, a, with a small group of artworks. However, none of them really had a fit for purpose home um, up until the opening of the Chow Chuck Wing Museum. None of them really had a fit for purpose home that met the needs of the 21st century. So that's really what drove my, my thinking, the lack of um, sufficient infrastructure to properly care and engage the public with, engage students with. Um, the Maclay Museum started as a purpose-built museum, but was shunted into the attic of that museum as teaching needs took, took over in about 1920. And it remained there until, until last year when we finally moved into the new Chow Chak Wing Museum. So there, there was a lot of need there. Um, mm. um, a lot of problems to be solved, but also some opportunities to be had in the bringing those collections together. And as we go through the, the slides that show you something of the museum, I'll talk about those, those intersections of collections, the way they can talk to, to each other in multidisciplinary ways. So there we have our brand new transformational building, the, um, the Chow Chuck Wing Museum. It was built on a greenfield site. It was um, designed by Sydney-based architects, Johnson Pilton Walker, Graham Dix and Keong Lee were the principal architects. They had museum experience. And what I really liked in working with them was the way they responded to our functional brief. What do we want in a museum? Um, when the, it's been a 15 year journey to get to here. And I'll talk about the, the very generous funding from our, from our donors in a minute. But one, one bit of advice that I was given as I was starting to collect information 10, 15 years ago of how to build a case for, to bring all these collections together was that um, really spend time on developing a good functional brief. What do we want the museum to do? All those, um, the way um, certain functions need to be co-located mean the museum operates well as a museum. As you can see, it's right on the edge of the city of Sydney. We're only a few kilometers from the very heart of the CBD. And it's right at the ceremonial entrance to the um, University of Sydney, opposite the uh, historic Great Hall, the first buildings. And it's opposite the library. So I like to say that, that we're, we're um, We've got a, a marvelous triangle, the ceremonial heart opposite that other, that other seat of knowledge, the, the university library. And then we have the now the university museum. 
It's um, it's a museum that's um, over five levels. I think the next slide um, gives some indication. Yeah, it's over five five levels. Four of them are public. It's eight thousand square meters in size, two thousand square meters of exhibition space. The lower levels, um, the lower level, as you can see, um, is our is our back of house. It's where many of the collections are held. So for the first time, we were able to access collections um, right in the, same, in the same building as where we were exhibiting them. Before this, we had three museums and collections spread out over, over eight or nine locations. And staff were also spread out over eight or nine locations. So it's been a thrill for me to bring everyone together, all the staff together, so they can talk through ideas. They can, they can get to understand each other's language. You know, the, the language a scientist speaks is slightly different language to an art historian, uh, for example. Um, and it, I think it creates a very vibrant um, morning teas can be had. You know, the discussions, the ideas flow around. This is um, taken, um, I'm showing the entry level. Um, Looking, looking up to the, um, the top level. So you enter at level three, the top level of the museum is level four. We're looking through to the temporary exhibition galleries there. Um, and we have um, about um, 16 exhibitions spread throughout the, the building. And I'll show you those in a bit more detail. Mm. Just go to the next slide. Um, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, true. Oh, yeah, I, I just, um, I had such a privilege, David, um, you guide us. Uh, I actually been there uh, twice myself, uh, bef just uh, before the um, uh, museum was opened and <laughs> people were still working on yeah. installating the uh, exhibition and also after it opened. Uh, you Certainly you feel not only the museum itself, the collections uh, are impressive, but also as you mentioned, the, the architect of the whole, whole building. So just to give you that openness, airy and uh, uh, friendliness as well. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, the circulation zone that we saw in the last slide is fed by natural light. Um, so the, the building has, while it appears to be a concrete block, I think it surprises people when they walk mm -hmm. through because it opens up and it's very light and airy, as you say. So I think we were really pleased with the, um, um, the way the architects approached the problems, um, the issues around get, um, um, controlling light, but also making it light and airy both. Mm. Um, the result is spectacular. That white staircase, I think, is one of the symbols of the museum now. In fact, it's been one of the most Instagrammed um, photographed parts parts of the museum actually um, it really makes a mark that's a great um, uh, introduction about the museum uh, uh, David you just mentioned that there are quite a few 16 or 18 exhibitions across the four levels of the museum um, it, that's a large number and I understand the museum has a large amount of a collection but uh, you not only the this exhibition is not only the permanent collection I believe some of our curated exhibitions as well uh, would you like to give us uh, some highlights about these uh, exhibitions it's well um, as you can see we we cover a whole lot of subject areas antiquities visual arts natural history ethnography, history of science. I think the opening exhibition um, on level three is one of the um, ones that really brings together the ideas of a multidisciplinary approach. You know, we've got 450,000 items spanning 500,000 years of human endeavor. You know, it's a broad range of materials that are both challenging and exciting for curators to use. Our, um, our First Nations collections, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander collections, a wonderful and feature in a large temporary exhibition um, up on level four in the Ian Potter Gallery. Um, this, is a, this is the opening exhibition um, 
on level three called object art specimen. And it really interrogates that how one item can be called an object, it can be called an artwork, it might not be called a specimen, how the, how the ideas um, around that object um, or when you bring two objects together can really work off one another. So looking at big themes such as love, sex and death or order and chaos or the, or the environment, you can see how collections can speak to one another. So depending on your, on your background, your, your education, your family history, you know, um, your interests, you'll start to create different narratives by looking at these eclectic, what at first eclectic group of objects. You'll notice here we're even um, referencing the, the history of the museum. The, um, the display cabinets there you see are from the Maclay Museum. They were um, built for the Maclay Museum in the 1880s. Um, um, beautiful Australian cedar cabinets that we've had refurbished and now have a, a new role in the 21st century museum. But just in this one slide, we've got, um, what have we got? What have, we've got a Trusc Etruscan funerary urn. Um, we've got a Dutch um, golden age painting from the um, 17th century. We've got um, Malangan figures from the Pacific area. Uh, we've got um, um, Southeast um, Italian Greek pottery, um, two, 3000 year old Greek, Greek pottery. No, it's a great, it's a great mix, but they all have a linking theme when you when you're in there. Mm. You start to extract that, you know. Yes, we require, you, you know, you, you need to read a bit. And um, in a survey, we 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 were delighted that people were spending over two hours in the museum. Mm. The average was over two hours, so it, it was clear that people were reading. Mm. This is a shot of our um, temporary. Oh. Do we want to go back to that? Uh, just for a moment. <laughs> this is a shot of our temporary exhibition gallery, 420 square meters, seven meter high ceilings. And the opening exhibition is um, Jalkery, the uh, 100 years of Yolnu art. Um, the Yolnu people are from um, very bribe, vibrant um, um, art communities and communities right throughout um, Northeast Arnhem Land. Art is a part of their everyday life and being. It is, um, to a young person, art, art is just them. It expresses their stories, their life, their everyday living. Mm. I do remember and this, this, uh, this very, very uh, beautifully presented uh, uh, exhibition. So First Nation people is one of the, uh, the focus of the museum, would, would you say? Yes, we've got a series of that go right series of displays that go right through the museum called Ambassadors. We um, liaised with about nine different communities, and elders and artists from those communities chose works from our collection to represent them. So it was them saying, "This is us. Welcome to our culture." Um, so rather than having an indigenous gallery that goes right through the whole building, these, mm. these um, 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 welcome points to different com Indigenous communities across Australia. Mm. The, the, the temporary exhibition gallery actually is, um, um, we're very pleased with that um, the response to the space, you know, the, the designers have loved working in there. It's the Ian Potter Gallery. Um, I might add that um, this museum, a very important addition, this, this museum is named after Dr. Chow Chak Wing, our principal donor. There were five donors that raised 23 million, that gave 23 million to the $66 million project. So Dr. Chow Chak Wing was our, by far our principal donor and the Ian Potter Foundation, um, Penelope Seidler and the Nelson Mears Foundation were all extraordinarily generous donors that really enabled this to happen. Mm. It would not have happened without their, gener their um, generosity. And because we were really bringing all these disparate collections together, renaming the museum just seemed like a natural thing to do in that tradition of 
university museums being named after prominent benefactors. Yeah, that definitely uh, is a, a extreme, um, extremely generous, um, um, you know, uh, donation to allow the university um, to put these uh, museums, the previous, uh, the different museums uh, together. So when people go in, can see everything, uh, can see everything. So uh, as you mentioned, there are songs, there are archaeology, there are art, uh, yeah. almost the. Uh, Something for everyone. <laughs> you can take kids uh, uh, in a school uh, school holidays go. So that's my. Um, I was wondering, um, David. So for museums like this, they are university in the university campus, uh, although it's in the middle of the city almost, but it still is in the university campus. Um, so they play. It plays a role uh, as a university. A museum as well as open to public. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, I often feel like we're we're walking on a tightrope sometimes um, because we're both outwardly focused with the public. We're open seven days a week and we're free of charge, but we're really focusing as well on our students. So one of the one of the great motivators for the university to get behind this project was our, our building up a case of object-based learning. Now, object-based learning has always happened in, to some degree. Um, so archaeology students were looking at the, the antiquities collections, for example, um, and using them. Um, and here we have an example of some of the splendid antiquities collections in the, in the Egyptian gallery. But the object-based learning studios that we were able to set up in the Chao Chakwi Museum have taken it to a different level. We've been able to employ a, um, uh, an academic, two academic engagement curators to work with our academic teaching staff to find ways to look at what they're teaching and find ways to integrate that teaching with collections. And the response has been overwhelming. Um, although we've only been open now Gee, with, with the current lockdown, we've only been open six, six months um, since November last year, open to the public. In that time, in that short period of time from late February right through to the end of June when we shut down um, in the current lockdown, um, we had 13,000 students through mm -hmm. um, in object-based learning classes. And those classes continue online. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the demand. Every faculty now is using the museum collections. For a museum director, it's so exciting. For our curators, it's so exciting. Uh, that's that's really wonderful, um, uh, David. You know, um, my other part of my previous life is a, um, and is currently as well as a medical doctor. So. Uh, so for for part of the, the museum, we have a you know medicine related uh, the, the artifacts as well. To I just imagine <laughs> to study in such a beautiful museum um, must be an escape from <laughs> anatomy, anatomy laboratory. I would think. <laughs> Sometimes we have to um, you know tell students to. To, to move because other classes have to come in. Uh, but of course, the whole museum becomes an, uh, an object-based learning lab, as it were. Mm. Uh, so we, we, we have distinct studios set up, but the whole museum really is a studio of learning. Mm. And it, it uses natural light, you know, um, Roman, Roman period sculpture and, and, and memorial, um, Latin inscription memorials. Um, uh, can be seen here in natural light. Um, it's it, it's been a, as I say a game changer for us. In in that it gives us more space. Seventy percent of what's currently on display hasn't been seen for at least 20, 30 years, if at all. That's the difference it makes. Yeah, I guess that's not a surprise, given you have more than 400,000 items. <laughs> that's a... Although many are insects, it has to be said. 350,000 of those are insects in those very important entomological cabinets. Mm. Um, and David, and another um, question, I uh, obviously, um, 
Vermilion art is focusing on contemporary Chinese art. And my mm -hmm. understanding is the first time the, uh, uh, the, your museum is to have a permanent China gallery. Um, uh, Yes. Can you give us a little yeah. bit of introduction on that one? I'm especially interested. Yeah, um, the China Gallery, um, a very important addition to what we can do. And, and there it is, um, featuring our first exhibition, Auspicious, curated by Xu Xia Chen. It's 120 square meters. It's adjacent to a visual arts gallery um, on, the, on the lower level of the museum. You'll notice we've... Um, there's a beautiful warmth in this gallery with the wooden floors, so treated differently to other galleries. We wanted to get that, that slight difference going there. It's fitted out to international standard. We'll be doing a program of changing exhibitions, um, changing um, perhaps every, um, every year, perhaps a bit quicker, depending on um, our circumstances. Um, for this opening exhibition, we're really looking at um, motifs in Chinese art, um, uh, from hairpins to imperial birthday dishes. Um, and they're drawn from the collections of the Chao Chakwing Museum's own collection, as well as the, the very generous loans from the Art Gallery in New South Wales and the uh, Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences, the Powerhouse Museum. Um, and so Shusha has put together this um, that, that really looks at the way the way symbols are used, um, the importance of um, you know the themes of prosperity, uh, fortune, and virtue, and how they uh, they 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 cut across all of Chinese art. Um, this exhibition will be up um, until May. This year, we've extended it because of the, the lockdown. We wanted to extend our program a little. And that'll be followed. Um, let me first of all tell you a bit about the collections there. Um, the Chinese collections um, in the, uh, have been really um, um, collected through bequests. There have been a, a few bequests in this space. Uh, the Godsell bequest, the Ma bequest, and the Sellers bequest. And also a bequest that has enabled us to purchase works, the, the uh, Morrissey bequest. Um, that was a bequest of some Japanese um, um, uh, uh, woodblock prints, but a very generous financial bequest that in perpetuity is enabling us to um, um, acquire works from East Asia. And so we've, we've been acquiring mainly 20th century works on paper from China and Japan. And that really set the scene of why we needed a China gallery. So it was really important um, to have that as, as well as, you know, the Chinese students um, are a significant part of campus life um, and remain so. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the uptake is still very strong this year oh, it, um, it, and it, into next year. Yeah, that's, hopefully you know, can come back the, soon. <laughs> despite the incredible difficulties, you know. Yeah, I understand. I understand what you're saying, David. Given the COVID and other tensions, but I believe many students are keen to come back as soon as possible, and many still here to study online and continue yes. their study and finish their degree in such a difficult time. Uh, so great to see have a, a China gallery there. And uh, I, I think not only just the used for ch ch Chinese students in the campus, uh, from uh, my own um, net network, a lot of uh, Chinese Australians uh, live in here for many years or the second or third generation of Chinese community. Um, and I uh, was uh, really, really pleased to hear this gallery is uh, become a part of the museum. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a popular gallery. Um, when we, in the first few weeks of opening, it was still in um, semester time or students were still on campus, should I say. Um, and it was really heartwarming to see, you know, young Chinese students um, really just immersing themselves in that gallery. It doesn't always happen. Um, <laughs> the museums that, you know, getting that, that, that age group of 17 to 25 through a museum can be difficult. Um, but it seems to be working so far. 
Mm. I think I think you hit it on the on the head, but you know, it's the breadth of material and some of the surprising juxtapositions, plus the the lovely architecture that's really um, um, brought them in. As well as good coffee in the coffee shop, I might add. Yeah, I was going to say, David, your cafeteria opposite to Victoria Park. Uh, I think yeah. that, that is a, a very, very uh, seductive cafe place. And uh, people yeah. just go there. They, they pass by the museum, but they also enjoy the cafe. I would love to go back as soon as uh, we open up. <laughs> Yeah, so Auspicious will be up until May next year. Mm. And then we'll be going into uh, an exhibition called Sentient Paper. So it's looking at works on paper, paper in Chinese art, that whole history, that rich history of using that, that marvelous material paper uh, in all the different forms. Um, this is an extraordinary woodcut. This was purchased through the Morrissey bequest. Um, it's 2.1 meters high, and it's a woodcut on paper. It's a it's, it's quite a quite a wonderful work. Um, uh, Jinping Su is a um, um, artist. Um, when we purchased this, he was working out of the Beijing Academy. Um, one uh, one of the professors there. I'm not sure where he is now. I'm, he, I'm assuming it's still it's other. still there. Yeah, he's still here at the Central Academy of Fine Art, the yeah. Kappa in Beijing. I think he achieved a lot. He became the, uh, uh, he's in charge of the visual art now, um, uh, the creative part. So it's a have, have a higher position. And recently he had a solo uh, exhibition in Beijing, I believe. Mm, yeah, it's a powerful work. We have a number by, by this artist. Um, Following this exhibition um, into 20, we've now into 2023, a really interesting one on Chinese toggles. Mm -hmm. Now, this is drawn from the powerhouse collection. Um, the Chinese toggles were collected by Alastair Morrison, um, who I got to know in Canberra about 25 years ago. Um, he passed away a number of years ago. Um, and, but, but left his fine collection of Chinese toggles to the Powerhouse Museum. And we'll be working with the Powerhouse Museum uh, and publishing a book on that collection as well through um, Power Publishing, part of the university. So you can see we're starting to develop these, these wonderful partnerships with, the, with, our, with our cultural, uh, with other cultural institutions. It was difficult to open in COVID, though, you know, um, <laughs> the, the opening of the, the museum is, it was challenging, uh, as you said, it was um, not what I imagined an opening of a big new cultural institution in Sydney would be. But nevertheless, you know, the, the 100 invited guests really enjoyed themselves. It should have been 300, so many people that we you know, I thought we, we should, we, we have to invite this person, that person. So, you know, there's so many people that I was hoping to invite to the opening that we just couldn't invite. So, um, but when we start to open out of COVID, there'll be some marvellous social events, I think, happening in our museum. That'd be great, David, because, uh, uh, I mean, although you reduce the size of the opening, but I still really think it's a it's a it's really such a great th th thing to do. You know, so encouraging, um, have the courage to open it because some some may just a delayed opening or something. So the fact that the museum is now open to public, you have online uh, online activities. Um, many of us have had the opportunity to visit the museum and we'll continually, you know, to see newer shows in the in near future, hopefully. Um, so that's really, really, you know, I admire your courage and the hard work. I, I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, your people in your team and the re relevant people have been working on this uh, for a long, long time. So congratulations. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And of course, the China, the Chinese works are spread around, you know, other, other exhibitions as well. And that's, you know, the Morrissey, work. we continue to purchase through the Morrissey bequest. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we recently, we purchased um, two photographs by um, Hiroshi Sugimoto, 
for example, you know, um, they they form they 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 are part of the visual arts collection. Um, they'll feature in an exhibition that is will will open um, at the beginning of 2022 in January, called Light and Darkness. Um, works of the 1960s, 70s, 80s, um, largely drawn from the Power Collection, um, the, the, the university's um, Power Collection is one of those collections that, that, that is really never, uh, it hasn't had a home for a long time. It's been housed by the Museum of um, Contemporary Art, um, who have a management agreement with the university to look after it, but we're gradually bringing large parts of that collection back to the university because we can now exhibit them. So that's another exciting event coming up in the visual arts calendar for Sydney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I look forward to that. David, can I just, um, you know, I, I always have a um, wondering for someone working in the museum every day, um, you know, the feeling must be quite different from uh, people just that come in to visit. I remember, you know, our beloved friend Adam Capon had his, uh, um, sadly passed away a few years ago, yeah. uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, he had his uh, favorite corner in the in, in New South Wales Art Gallery. Um, do you have uh, your favorite section or op, uh, artifact or corner in the museum to share with us? Um, um, one of the privileges of a director is you get to browse in the stores. Um, you know, uh, it's fact, in fact, it's one of the privileges I had at the National Library, you know, in browsing the stacks as well. Um, but the, um, I have interests in Southeast Asian ceramics. I have interests in uncut gem crystals and mineralogy. Um, the mineralogical collections interest me because they're some of the um, earliest formed collections in Australia, um, as study as study aids and so on. But you know, um, in those collections, I've discovered meteorites. You know, meteorites are chunks of rock older than the Earth itself, and they really capture my imagination. So yes, they are on display. I insisted that our, our small <laughs> meteorite collection go on display. Um, and that's in a section of deep time. Um, you know, how do we measure time? Time, time is this, this, this is, you know, it really captures the imagination, the age of these, these rocks. They, they were hurtling around the asteroid belt before the earth, well, when the earth was just a gaseous mass, it hadn't really formed. So yeah, there are, there are some, but they, but they change over time. <laughs> and there's sections of the visual arts collection, you know, uh, just, yeah, I come back to favourite works, but then there'll be a new favourite come up. Uh, I know it's very hard to pick, it's just like, a, you know, yeah. eight children, five children, and uh, everyone you, you love. Uh, Everything's but, a favourite, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some are just more favourite than others. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think, uh, you know, when I was there, I was like, couldn't you know sometimes couldn't focus because so many interesting things like you said from the little insects to to European art to Chinese art uh, I would spend maybe you know a half day for each room if I if I'm allowed to to really study it and look at it in rather than just quickly uh, go through it um, and of course we've also got a, um, a contemporary art project going where artists respond to the collections mm. um it, you know um contemporary artists really like me love to browse through and we give them that privilege um, um we've got a lineup of um a number of artists um i think the program is pretty well settled for the next few years but uh, we opened the um, works by sarah goffman um, who responded to the, both the news items on display as well as things in storage with, with her art. And that will open when we reopen. We're hoping that that will be, of course, mid-October. Mm. And that's in a dedicated gallery called the Penelope Gallery. So we've named different galleries after, um, well, there's the Nicholson Galleries after the original um, um, donor. 
um, the Maclay galleries, the Power Gallery named after John Power in the Power Collection. And then we have the Penelope Gallery. Penelope Seidler was one of our very generous donors. And that's the Contemporary Art Gallery. Mm. Oh, that, that, that'd be wonderful. I, I understand that she's a keen contemporary art collector and uh, lover, and that that's a really appropriate. Uh, I would mm. love to, to, to see that up. Um, uh, so David, we already started um, receiving questions. Would you like to start the questions or, the, uh, or do you like to uh, add a few more things? And uh, uh, have we go through the slides you provided us? Uh, Let's go. Um, I'm, uh, there were a couple of other slides, I think. Uh, may, maybe Let's just, go through um, that. We still have a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because uh, there were a couple of other different views of the... Yes. Uh, the, the, the um, 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 the visual arts gallery, for example. Um, yeah. Um, for the first, you see this, this gallery, prior to this gallery, prior to the museum, our, our art gallery was only 70 square meters. Yet we have over 8,000 artworks in the collection. So this now, this, this is just a selection around the theme coastline. And this will change over time. Different themes will come in different juxtapositions, new selections by our senior curator. Um, the museum has already attracted some really um, wonderful new donations. Um, one, one bequest that we had um, recently, fairly recently, the Neville, Neville Grace bequest, uh, Mr. Grace gave to the university because he, he, he heard the Chow Chuck Wing Museum was happening. And so he knew that the, the art collection would finally get a decent home. And therefore he, he, he left his very, his very beautifully curated collection of um, Australian Impressionist works to the university. Mm. And many of them are on display in this one gallery. Yeah. Uh, that, that looks really good. Any other uh, sections or would you like to go through? Um, um, I'm just a couple of other in the China. Let's just show a couple in the China gallery. Yep. Um, Roman, can we yeah, have so a... Yeah, that's the one. Right we, yeah. Um, I think there was one more, maybe not. Yeah. It, it, look, it, it, it's, it's going to be... Um, every time we change over, it's going to have a completely different look and feel. I think that, that's the main point. So... Um, it's, a, it's going to be a museum where you'll need to come in time and time again. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> but let's go to questions. So that's fine. Yeah. I mean, just to follow your introduction about the um, further introduction of a Chinese museum, we do have a comment and question here. When will the exhibition be extended to? I think you mentioned that it's extended to May next year. Is that right? To May next year. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. and, and then that'll be auspicious will come down um, and then sentient paper will, will be installed in its place. Yeah. And um, I see there's one about a question about entry fee. We are free of charge. <laughs> we are free of charge. Yeah. That, um, you know, do donations are always welcome. I might add, you know, we, they enable us to do things that we can not otherwise do. We've got a very, uh, generous cohort of donors. Um, as you know, the museums are very expensive institutions to run. So we're, we're always, always grateful for the generosity of our supporters. Mm. And the address is right on um, Parramatta Road, um, opposite Victoria Park, right at the, the, the entrance to the university off Parramatta Road. And it's the building you see once you enter off that, that entrance, just by Victoria Park. It's the building on the right as you go up towards the quadrangle. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the address is University Place. It's the cent centre part of the university. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the, it's not far from the Fisher Library, isn't it? Oh, uh, it's opposite the Fisher Library. Yeah. So many students know the Fisher Library. This yeah. is this is opposite the Fisher Library. Yeah. And then the Chinese galleries curators design are they in the style of uh, chronological? Yeah. Um, it's going to vary. Um, it depends on the exhibition we're doing. Um, 
in um, um, auspicious, um, it really is around themes rather than chrono, chrono, uh, uh, rather than, uh, rather than chronological. So it can jump around chronology, but it's grounded in themes. Um, and that's really up to the curator to determine, you know, exhibition by exhibition, how they will construct the, 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 art, the art exhibition in the, the, the next door to the China Gallery is largely chronological from the 17th century right, right through to the contemporary. Mm. Yeah, we, we can see different uh, things. We're expecting different things from different period at different time. And here's a question from a professor Han Jing. Um, she's a university, a Western Sydney University. Uh, uh, the Institute of Australian and the Chinese uh, Culture and Art. Professor Han Jing asked, uh, um, David, it's a, um, a great presentation, uh, presentation that's comment. Just wondering what would be the selection criteria for exhibitions? How you decide that, you know, what to exhibit? For the first few years, our exhibitions will be based on our collections. Um, I think when you've got 70% um, 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 that have never been seen, there's still a hell of a, a lot more that have yet to be exhibited. Um, and then our curators toss, toss around ideas um, and, 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 and um, these are collated by our deputy director, Dr. Paul Donnelly, um, who, who, who heads up the curatorial teams and Gradually, the 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 um, um, the, exhibi the exhibition ideas form for new exhibitions. We've got specialist galleries in photography and contemporary art. We've got um, um, the Near East and so on. Um, some some exhibitions and galleries, such as the Egyptian Gallery, will not change for quite a few years. I expect. Um, some are more current. Yeah, some more permanent. There'll be different uh, rates of change. Will be different rates of change. Mm. That, that makes sense. And the, some are uh, semi-permanent, maybe, and yeah. others. Um, yeah. Um, so we quite so continue the question list. That we've got quite a few mm. here. Um, uh, what do you think makes a Chow Chow Bing uh, Museum stands out and uh, unique from? Uh, other museums in Sydney. Thank you. I think that's a really good question, David. And it's a great, it's a great question, and it's a question that we really had to interrogate when we were putting together the business case. What is our point of difference? Yeah. Well, our point of difference a is that we're a university museum, so we're, we're we're very much involved in the teaching and research life of the university. But as far as the public is, is concerned, it's that breadth of subject areas. It's that breadth of materials. It's where the arts and sciences meet and connect and intersect. That's our point of difference. We also have the largest antiquities collection um, in this part of the world by far. And, you know, we have material that you simply won't see in other collections. Yeah, that, that's, uh, I think, uh, stands out. <laughs> I have a largest, largest collection of antiquities. That, that, that's a... Uh not easy to catch up with other museums. Um, so uh, just that it goes through the question. Um, how, as easy opening hours, David, you mentioned there's a seven days a week. Um, yeah, well, we're open. We're open seven days a week, Monday to Friday. We're open 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Thursday. Thank you so much, David, for on that you know, note. We, concluded today's session. And uh, thank you, David, for sharing that exciting insight of this brand new, uh, new museum. I'm sure it will be uh, becoming more and more important part of the Sydney cultural landscape in near future. Uh, Chow Chow Kvin Museum in Sydney University and uh, will open the door to everyone, hopefully in, on 12th of October or 21st of October. So in, please visit. Uh, David and the museum when you can and the, and then you can look up the, their website to see the opening hours and they will put the notice when before they start and thanks yes. David, thanks again and uh, thank you everyone for joining us today 
and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.